Sharp PC 1500. I got this one to illustrate disruption, how something completely can change a market. And uh, this is the market that was changed. Fawcett in Otvida Berg had more or less a monopoly on the rotary calculator market, especially in Europe. This unit comes from my father's work and he had it in his office in the 60s, 70s and uh, actually all the way up to 1985. It's a mechanical calculator that doesn't need batteries nor power, just some elbow grease to work. This one was built in 1963, if you look at the serial number. Um, Fawcett completely missed the transition to calculators. They um, had their factory in Otvida Berg. They were a big player in the office supply market in Sweden. But when first the cheap calculators came, they missed the market completely. They missed the transition and after the cheap calculators, with about 10 years later, had these the pocket computers. I myself have collected so far four or five different Sharp models um, depending on how you look at the IQ 7000 you currently see here. This one is more advanced than the smaller pocket ones. Here you can insert it cards with different type of applications and software. The smallest one is the PC 1246 it's uh, the one with the broken screen. Uh, four bit CPU, one megahertz operation. Then we have the 1270, same CPU, but it's a runtime. You can't change the code in this one, it just runs a preset application. Then we have the 1403 with its 768 kilohertz CPU, but it's an 8 bit one. And we're gonna bench it against the PC 1500 that runs this uh, Z80 sort of CPU at 1.3 megahertz. The one I have is a fairly early one so it only has the 2 kilobyte of RAM. Later models have larger RAM. They were also sold in the, on the American market under the Tandy brand. And we're gonna quickly take it apart and uh, just sweep over the PCB with the camera. It's uh, divided into two parts. One part is the, the driver board and the other part is the, the CPU and I.O. board. The ROM in this one is A04. And that also tells us that this is a fairly late revision of the, of the uh, computer. These were made until 1986, so this is a uh, there is very few wires across the board and everything, so it's a, it's a clean design by now. They've sorted out all the the quirks and and hot fixes they had to do on the earlier ones. These are the driver chips for the PC for the LCD, and there you have very fussy the the ROM chip A04. It says. We're gonna put it together now and then I'm gonna enter a bit of code into it and I will enter the same code into my um, 1403 and the program that we're gonna run on it is a program written by Noel, Noel's Retro Lab, where he uses it to benchmark different basic computers. Sorry for that shaky film clip and um, yeah I'm going to take a look at the, the performance on this and see how they measure up against each other and uh, of course in general the basic of these are very limited it's a simple basic and here you can see the program I had to add a instruction that removes the wait states on the print command Otherwise, um, it would pause at every dot and wait for next input. 
and uh, so we will see when we run this in a little while. The 1403 blanks its screen when it, it makes uh, calculations, probably to compensate for its slower CPU. Uh, here we're running them, and I have my cell phone running as a, a stopwatch next to it. I'm speeding this up eight times, so we don't have to wait in real time for it to, to complete. Like I said, the basic is, is quite quite limited. So the instruction set is not as advanced, but you can actually write assembler on these as well. There we have the 1500 ready, and there we have the 1403 ready. So back to the beginning again. What can we do with these? Well, with this one, I also have the, the docking station. We have to remember that at this time, portable computers were still luggable computers. And if they had any sort of battery capacity, it was very low and performance were even lower. So even if these are slow by today's standard, they are not horribly slow. Um, by 1980-ish standards. And they thought about everything. They even have a holder for the, for the latch. That's the right way. The stocking station also comes with a tape interface and a... It's a four-color printer, by the way. Prints with pens and a power supply. The power supply is center negative. That's worth pointing out. So you don't burn the, uh, the power management in the computer or the docking station if you use the wrong one. 9 volts, center negative. I had some issues with it first. I guess it's just because it had been stored for a very long time. I had to reset the memory a few times before it started to working normally. But um, in general it's in, in very good condition. There is not much or if any scratches or marks on it. And to make it really expandable you have a continuation of the expansion port that you dock it into. So you have the full system bus again on the back of it. There you have the audio jacks for the tape recorder. So you can connect uh, EEPROM programmers and, and other sorts of devices that were developed at the time. I think they were a modem as well. These have also been used for uh, payment terminals, sort of point of sale in different countries. And the case for it emphasizes this portable pocket feeling. If you put it in the case here, you have a. Um, you can have everything here, as well as your various of supplies and and utilities for it. This one is, um, for its time, very well so sorted and, and thought through, and I am still impressed by it. And as again and again, if you compare it to other portables at the time. This is indeed a portable computer. Thanks for watching.